Hi, welcome to the Subversive Stitch podcast. Uh, my name is Anna Marie, um, and today I'm going to show you everything that I knit in 2023. I have already shown you some of these things because I think I made a video about six months ago, um, but I'm going to go through those, uh, but maybe a bit briefly, briefer, whatever. Um, and then also, yeah, the stuff that I didn't show then. Uh, I don't have everything because some of the things I knit for other people, but I will, yeah, do my best to put pictures or just not talk about it for very long, you know? <laughs> so um, the first thing that I knit was, or that I finished, I guess, was this, um, the Tea Rose Slip On. Um, which when I tried to wear more recently because I knit it in January and then I wore it a little bit in January and February which was great because it did keep me really warm when I was like standing on a picket line for a long time um, because it's made of drop snow I think which is like unspun yarn um, and I think now knowing sort of how it weathers including like it just isn't very <laughs> it's not very nice to look at anymore really I mean it's fine you know but it just isn't as good as I sort of would like it to have been um knowing what I know now and maybe would change and do this with a different yarn but um it's really bul bulky yarn weight um and it was like the first kind of like garment like this that I've made like a sort of almost jumper type thing um and yeah it's like a retro vintagey energy and I was really worried that it wouldn't fit. I think this is maybe like a, um, you know, a through line with quite a lot of things I knit. But like, basically, I was worried it wouldn't fit. So I was like making the maybe penultimate largest size. And so instead of keeping with that, when I got to the shoulders, I knit the number of, of rows that you would knit for the last size, just to make sure. But then I actually think like it did make it too big. Um, and when I was wearing it in January and February last year, I... Uh, put like a ribbon through the neckline and I pulled it tight and I did think that made it look really nice I, I definitely have a selfie of me doing that so I'll put that here um, but then when I tried to do it again um, more recently when I was trying to wear it in like December I uh, I couldn't get it to fit the way I wanted to or like sit the way I wanted to so I just kind of gave up in the end <laughs> um, but I mean I'm not done wearing this for sure uh, but I, I would like to maybe re-knit the pattern in a different yarn. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But um, I, it was, you know, it, I, it was a really learning experience. It's knit um, back and forth. You know, you start from the front or back. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But like of the ribbing and you knit all the way up and then you knit all the way back and then you seam the sides. And then you also do knit these sleeves, which having done so... Um, originally I thought they looked kind of cute, but now, now, especially because the, um, quality of the yarn has kind of, like, just not gotten very nice. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm being kind of negative. It's, like, fine, but it's just, like, it's not as, like, solid as I wanted it to be. And then also it's sort of kind of on its way to felting, I guess. Um, and yeah, I just think now it looks even weirder than it did before. So I maybe would have done without this and just, uh... You know, I mean, I guess I could have maybe knit like one or two rows of ribbing or something around the, but I mean, it could have just been like sort of more t-shirt length. I don't know. Um, yeah, but definitely like a learning curve and fun to make and like the yarn altogether didn't cost me very much. So that was good. Um, and um, very exciting to, you know, have made something. So, yeah, in terms of like the year sort of and how it looks overall there's definitely like a sort of I was making things in January February and then I don't think I made anything until like May um and that's partially because I had a lot of like chronic pain in my hands and stuff and I just kind of stopped being able to knit for very long at all uh which was really sad and really hard and I didn't like it <laughs> um so yeah the next thing I made was this which I've definitely shown before you know looking scragglier and scragglier every day but I mean I kind of love it so this is a modified uh, look at my holes by James N Watts pattern um, 
Oh, I haven't talked about what I'm wearing yet, but that's because it's in the list of things I made. So I'll show it then. <laughs> yeah, so I did this to use up um, a bunch of the um, frogged uh, yarn that I had from my Harry Styles uh, cardigan that I made in like 2020. Just one of the first garments I ever made and I, you know, I made a lot of sort of silly decisions in the long term with it. It was just, it was, I held this yarn double so it was just super super heavy. It also meant that whenever I washed it like it was just very, it took ages to dry and I never really wanted to wear it. I had like a couple of good outfits with it and then I was like, yeah, I'm gonna repurpose this yarn because there's no point because I'm not wearing it. Um, so I made a look for my, like this is last year I made, or like sorry, the year before in 2022, I made a couple look at my holes um, for my friends. And then I, with the leftover of this, I made this dress. Um, which I am really happy with. It got more wear, obviously, in the summertime. I am kind of struggling a bit with how to style it, uh, partially because now I would say I'm on like a kind of sneers Jewish dressing journey that um, <laughs> that maybe is a bit less uh, <laughs> okay with, you know, clothes that have loads of holes in. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, and I'm not gonna like get rid of it or frog it or anything. Like it's really great and I'm very happy with it. And I could definitely wear it over dresses. That's not a problem. It's just like I need to find a good dress to do that with. Um yeah, I I also knit this at a slightly different gauge than the look at my uh holes pattern. Um, because I wanted it I mean this is like an Aran weight yarn, I believe, so I wanted it to be um Wow, just finding all of the like mess that I made with this um so yeah and I wanted it to look a particular way um so I think I went up like maybe two or four uh needle sizes to like 12 mm needles or something it was it was very big um and it also did knit up fairly quickly I mean it still took quite a bit of work because obviously it's still quite a lot of knitting but like it is like 80% whole <laughs> so um that that really helped my friend actually gave me back because of various reasons she gave me back um the uh look at my holes I knit for her so I now have more of this same yarn um but I think I actually might knit like a skirt with it this time we'll see I mean it's a cotton you know quite heavy yarn so I don't really know how effective it will be but at the same time like I have so much of it like I may as well experiment and like learn some more but like properly you know whereas with my Harry Styles cardigan I was just making a lot of mistakes I made that and I made the T-Row slip-on dress um and everything that I'm talking about I will link in the description box the next thing I made I don't have with me it was just like a neckerchief for one of my friends I think in the past video I made I probably put a picture of it or maybe showed it so whatever um my friend really liked it so that's nice um then I made this Sort of very quick crochet iPad cover laptop thing. Not laptop, I don't know why I said laptop. iPad cover crochet. Um, yeah, I just put my iPad in it and then I close it and then I wrap it up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just like a modified granny square and then like I just kind of made a triangle. It does the job and it's cute and I really like the colours that I chose and stuff. So yeah. Um, I also then have, I think, two other things, no, three other things that I don't have. One of them was a test knit, which I ended up really disliking my version of, although it was a nice test knit, uh, which is the Mimosa headband. Um, and I think that's maybe the last thing I made before I had this really long break of knitting because I was in a lot of pain. And I think it, you know, it maybe should have stopped earlier, but obviously it was a test knit, so I needed to do it, otherwise I felt bad for um, mucking up. Um, so yeah, there was that. And then I also made, uh, just like a little dishcloth for one of my friends for their birthday. And then I also finished, finally, the Capulet blouse that I was knitting for my mum. Um, which I guess is another reason why I had, like, a kind of stagnation period, because I just really needed to finish it, but it was just, like, very bored of doing so, and, like, uh, it was just hours and hours of work. And then it was also quite difficult, because I don't see my mum very often. And so there were lots of times when it was like, well, I, I should really check if this is going to fit her, otherwise I'll have to redo it. I think I did have to redo quite a bit of it, but it was okay in the end. And I finished it, and she really likes it, so that's good. Um, that is good. 
okay so the next thing that I knit is I think something that you only saw like when it was in progress. Finally we get to something like good and interesting that I actually really want to talk in depth about and that's the Capulet blouse. Nope, it's not the Capulet blouse, it's the cloud bow dress that I am wearing right now and I'm really happy with it. I think, you know, I didn't take into account like how the fabric is obviously gonna stretch. I mean, it's a dress, so also there's quite a lot of it. So that's like fairly heavy, um, but I am just really happy with how it came out. I really love the colors. I've gotten quite a lot of compliments on the colors that I chose, which I'm happy with, because I felt like when I put them all together, I had like a real breakthrough with it. Uh, so, okay, I used, um, I, I will also try to insert some pictures of the full length dress. It goes pretty far to the ground um and it's getting ever more and more lengthened i think um <laughs> and i will not lie to you i have i have done a few of the ends but i have not done all of the ends um uh, but i've done like the ones that i thought were the most important to do that would like really affect how you view it um in terms of like being able to see through like here i think and maybe the sleeves i don't know also i don't know if you can tell but yeah uh, one sleeve is done and the other sleeve isn't and the reason is because I think I made one sleeve slightly too short and then I was like I just don't care so I'm just gonna leave it as is and that's fine it's you know I made it it's definitely full of like imperfections and the sleeves themselves are also different sizes for some reason I don't know how I did that but there we go um, but I mean enough that well <laughs> I can tell actually when you look at it and I think you probably can too but I think if you glance at this like you know casually it'll be fine <laughs> and again i did do a bit of my oh i'm worried it's not gonna fit stressing out uh but in the end it was fine um and like again i think because this is probably gonna stretch a little bit at least um it will be fine you know for a, a long time um i did also modify the pattern i guess slightly by the this neckline i just didn't really like how it looked I mean, basically, I think in the pattern you would, like, fold this over. You'd maybe knit a bit more and then fold it over and then it would be fairly, like, like, maybe like this. And I didn't really like that, so I just, in the end, like, knit slightly more. I picked up more stitches, I think, and um, and then just, like, let it roll over like this. Um, and I think it's fine. I think it's nice. I, I feel like, to be honest, like, the neck is maybe where my inexperience comes most forward. Um, but you know, that's okay. I also think I actually overstretched the bot this again because I was stressed that they wouldn't fit. These bits I knit first, like these squares, because it's knit square, you pick up like you knit two squares, you pick up along the edge of the squares for each arm, and you do the sleeve and then you go around and then you knit the very long um uh dress, you know, skirt part. Um and because of that, well, um, no idea where I was, but um, <laughs> uh, the point is that I finished it. <laughs> That's not the point. But anyway, um, yeah, I think I started knitting it in May and then I finished it in September or something. Um, and obviously it's like knit on quite large needles, which I think is good. Um, and it's one of the reasons why it felt like not so endless to be making because it is really quite big um, And yeah, I so like I said, I'm really happy with the color choices But I'm also quite just happy with the yarn that I ended up choosing I do actually still have this much left of the linen that I knit the sort of whole thing through with um, Which is fine. I mean, there's not very much here. There's maybe what like 20 grams maybe I don't know um but I will maybe at some point figure out what to do with this um and then the other things that I knit uh it with uh I have this um which I actually this one I do have some left of I hope you can kind of see the the different colors so um it's a really lovely yarn it's by Fable Knitwear and it's called ask i think in spring meadow i'll like correct myself if i'm wrong um maybe also in the description box um and then i also used just some of the this um jameson and smith um sort of in a, like a purpley heathery kind of color 
to go along with it. I then have another Fable Knitwear um, yarn, which is this mohair, like silk mohair, which is, I don't remember the name, but it's in, I think it's maybe in Capula or something like that. It's like a pink and green and white um, mohair, which I really liked and I used all of that up. Um, yeah, you can maybe get more of a sense of it here. Um, and I was just, yeah, really happy with how that came out. And then what else did I use? So did I say that I used like a drop? I also just used some of like a drops, um, kid silk mohair that I had left it maybe in moonlight or something, just cause I was worried about running out of the mohair, which I obviously did. Um, but then it ended up being like, I didn't need the white one very often. In fact, yeah, there's like maybe, I used it maybe like four stripes. <laughs> so I probably could have not because I do have more of this. But I, I think it like adds, you know, it's just nice. Like I don't think it takes away from the design and I quite like it. I ended up doing two stripes of it when I brought it in. And I quite, quite like that because the whole point was that it was random, which means in randomness there could be like that kind of like repeat. Um, What else did I use? Did I talk, I talked about that one. I talked about... Yeah, I think that's everything um, that I used for it. This is just like a woolly knit linen cotton cone, um, which I got years ago now. Um, and I do have a whole other 500 gram one of a different color, like a pinkish color, which I would still really like to use. I do actually have a couple plans for it maybe, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but it was really great. And like, I'm just so happy with how it came out. I will say also, one of the reasons why the colors working so well together and like people complimenting me on those is really nice for me is because I feel like they're quite excuse me I feel like they're quite subdued in a way that like I don't normally wear with colors like in terms of like you know the difference between this kind of color and like this kind of color is quite big but um it still really worked and like I really like wearing it I I do get a little bit itchy and I would prefer to be wearing something that like goes up here so again a bit like with this I am kind of struggling to figure out the best things to wear under it and like how to properly yeah wear it um but I do have a couple dresses that I put on under it I think it would look good I do have like a beige dress that I think looks good under this but it's pretty short and it's also strapless and I don't really want that so if I could find another beige dress that is maybe like got like a neckline and a sleeve like has at least three quarter length sleeves and is a bit longer then that would maybe be perfect to wear under this but I don't know we'll see what I can find and how I end up styling it um yeah is there anything else I want to say about it definitely my biggest project yet and um yeah very cool it's like kind of hilarious that I like still haven't knitted a jumper like properly but I did knit two dresses in 2023 then again obviously like both of them were quite like large gauges and like have quite a lot of holes or just like aren't knit super fine or fingering or anything like that so you know but it's still quite a lot of yarn so yeah oh and I will say also I was really happy as well with how because I only had so I only had one of the um spring meadow color and I only had one of the mohair color and I also yeah no that's it sorry and as a result of that I wanted to use them in things that like really made them like shine um and I feel like I did well with this because they're like very present, you know, like it's, it's a, like this dress is made up by them in a, in a nice way too. I hope that made sense, but you know, like when something is like quite special and you only have a little bit of it and then you want it to be like focused on, um, when you do use it as opposed to kind of like, oh yeah, blended into the background, like it, it could be a different shade altogether. It wouldn't really matter that much. Like I didn't want it to be like that. So yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah. Okay. Now we go to the very like smaller project part of the year so um the next thing I knit was this collar number two I think um I got this pattern literally years ago I tried to knit it in maybe 2020 or 2021 and I just could not get my head around it like it just didn't work and I was using like yarn that I didn't really even like and I didn't like how it was coming together and looking so I just sort of like parked it but I've really wanted some collars like this I have been looking for clothing that has this kind of collar just already in it but I just decided to give up and be like fine I will make it <laughs> oh this looks cute um so I did and I made this out of knitting for olive silk 
and I do still have like basically half of a ball of yarn, <laughs> ball of yarn of that left over. It's, you know, it's really nice. I'm really happy with how it came out. I definitely made a couple mistakes, but I think like overall it looks great. And I also quite get often uh, compliments when I wear this. Um, I can't remember if I did the like closure totally different to how the pattern says, but um, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Let's just pretend you can't see the lump of my other collar underneath. But yeah, so um, it's just, yeah, it's really nice. It's really simple. I really like this shade of pink. I mean, I kind of wish it was like either darker or lighter pink, I guess. But, um, but I still think it's really nice. I can't remember what colour it is, but I will indicate as get as well. I think I knit the largest size. I think there's three sizes in the pattern. Um, and I have been wondering whether I should just knit another one in this colour and give it to somebody else. Or I should knit a smaller size and see, because I mean, there is space, it's not like it's tight around my neck and it'd be interesting to see, or use it for a different project altogether, which I actually might, because I think I might knit a curio collar and I thought it could be nice to use something silk so that like, at least for the part that's like against my skin, because again, like I have sensitive skin, especially around my neck, so wearing like wool is not good, which is also one of the reasons why I ended it with the linen but I actually don't know how effective that was in stopping it from being itchy because I'm a bit itchy. But yeah. Okay, so the next thing I made, I don't have with me, but I have this stopgap for it, which is um, my own bub bonnet, which I made um, in 2022. Um, this is by Lydia Morrow. Um, it's a great pattern. Uh, I really love it and I, you know, like to wear it I mean I, I do I do get stared at a lot and then one time I did get like physically harassed but um <laughs> I guess that's just what being a queer widow is like um and I will not let that stop me from wearing things that make me happy so also it seems like I honestly I do get harassed like whatever I wear to be honest so it was just like physically pretty horrible when that happened but you know whatever um but the point is, I made another one for my friend, um, and I made it in black and pink stripes, including the horns. Um, I'll try to, you know, I'll ask if I can share a picture of her wearing it um, in this. Uh, we also did take photos of like me wearing mine and her, hers, her wearing hers together, which I thought was really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with hers, how hers came out. I think I made the, I tried to make the horns like smaller than mine, but I think they came out either the same side, size or bigger. Um, and also, yeah, I had to send it to her so that she would have it in time to actually wear it. Um, and then we did end up seeing each other, which was nice. But, you know, just in case we hadn't had that time, uh, which does mean I think that the horn shape is like not how I would style it. <laughs> um, and maybe it needs to be like kind of properly molded into, you know, into a proper shape because they're not that curved, unlike mine, which are a bit curved. And then when I wear it, like I can make it more curved. I think she's a little bit more like careful about doing that kind of thing, which is fair enough because she didn't knit it. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm really happy with how that came out. I actually do, like I have been asked to make a bob on it for the person that I knit the neckerchief for, my, my friend, wife, my best friend, whatever. Um, so that's a project that I have ongoing. And I also kind of want to just knit myself like another bonnet because I really like wearing, I really like wearing bonnets. Like I, I often have my hair in a plait, so it works quite well for me. And then also like, sorry about that, my alarm went off. Um, I think I was just saying that I don't wear hats. Like, I think hats look really bad on me, basically, except for, like, a witch's hat. <laughs> um, so a bonnet is kind of, like, perfect. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, then the last thing I knit in 2023 were these gloves. Okay, let's just pretend everything is the same. <laughs> uh, my phone died, so I'm back to finish recording. I don't know if I wanted to say more about whatever I was talking about, but we're moving on. Um, this is the last project that I made in 2023. Um, these are the wristed gloves and it's a free pattern. 
um, and I used Regia Full Ply in a particular colour, I don't remember, um, and I have like, I think you get 100 gram balls of this and I have like, I think 50 grams at least, maybe a bit more, um, so I definitely could even make these gloves again or a different pair of gloves. Um, and making gloves was like one of the goals that I had for 2023, um, so I'm glad I did that. I basically, <laughs> in December, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to a place that's really cold and I have this issue with my fingers getting really, really cold. Um, so I'll try to like knit these like right before I go. So I like knit quite fast for like, I don't know, two weeks before I went on this trip. And then when I was in the trip, like it wasn't that cold. So I didn't really need them, but it was fine. I mean, I didn't, you know, they were also just quite quick to knit. So that was good. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so it has this like lace pattern, uh, which is really nice. I like it a lot. Um, and yeah, I, I decided to leave the tops of the thumbs open so I could use my phone. Um, I might make little, like, covers that, you know, you can pull up and uh, up and on um, at some point. But I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I care that much, you know. Um, when I knit this first hand, I didn't especially like how the thumb kind of, and, like, the thumb hole was, like, placed, I guess. Um, and I still don't really like it. It's slightly better. I did also go back and I did a bunch of short rows and I did redo the thumb, like knitting the whole thumb like multiple times until I came up with this idea to just have it open. Um, but yeah, so I tried to kind of like uh, help with that when I made this second one, which I potentially did a little bit in terms of the thumb placement. But what I don't like slash what happened in response to that, even though I tried not for this not to happen, but is that the lace pattern is totally crooked. Um, you know, it's supposed to look like that and it looks like this. So um, that's a shame. <laughs> and I wish I could uh, have fixed some of the fitting without having done that. Maybe I should have just left it, but it just made me really uncomfortable. I think I think this is the best solution. Uh, that they have for it and it's you know it's fine um people don't really notice that I have a wonky lace on my glove or you know I kind of appreciate it if they do notice that because then they might be paying attention to like the fact I probably knit these myself you know so that's okay um I really like how the fingers like pool the colors I think the only thing is that this does have a bit too much gray in it for me and I did even like not knit some of the gray bits so like I just skipped them to find the next you know pink bits basically <laughs> but I do think there is a bit too much grey in it still um but I tried to go with the flow you know um it was really cool to like see how to knit a gloves how to knit a glove I mean and I really enjoyed like knitting the fingers of the first hand and just like seeing it become what it's supposed to be you know um so yeah I'm not sure if I would knit this pan again um but I, I might do, I, I like the person who makes the pattern, I can't remember their name, but like they have a bunch of free glove patterns. So there's like another one called maybe like Falling Leaves, which I guess I could maybe make um, with the rest of this. But I knit these to keep my hands warm, like to keep my fingers warm specifically, because I do have mitts that cover like, you know, up until here. Um, and they don't really, or at least like, I feel like they let in, like they let in quite a lot of, like they're just not very warm. And I thought they would be. I said they would be, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so that's, yeah, like that's a little bit frustrating. <laughs> um, but I am glad to have knit these and to have like fulfilled one of my knitting goals. I think maybe another knitting goal was probably to knit a dress, which I definitely did. Um, I also think, what other knitting goals did I have? I didn't knit any socks. I did start, actually, I did start knitting a sock out of this like spooky Halloween yarn from Hobby, <laughs> uh, which I really like actually. I really like the color combination and stuff. Um, and I started knitting these on 2.25 needles before kind of realizing that like, I don't think I'm ever gonna knit anything this small with this small a needle. Like, I don't think I can deal with that. Uh, so I don't know. Also, I do feel like they're just very thin. Um, oh no, I've dropped a stitch. Yeah, I just like, I think it's gonna be like kind of thin and I don't know, I don't really, I just don't think I can knit on 2.25, like, it's just too small. 
Um, so instead what I was thinking is maybe I'll hold it, hold it double. Also because the yarn is fingering, but it's not very thick at all. Like it's really obviously quite like weak and it's also not very, like, I don't know. I mean, it's fine. It's, you know, it's hobby Halloween yarn. So yeah, I was thinking I could maybe hold it double. I could go up like maybe 0.5 needle size and maybe that would be a nice to fabric and also like wouldn't make me go insane from how long it would take to knit a whole sock. I just can't, it's just, it just takes forever. I just, I couldn't, I can't do it, I don't think. Maybe one day. Yeah, I did also want to knit some more like vintage stuff, uh, which didn't really happen. Um, but obviously part of that was because from like February into May, I was just like not really knitting and not able to knit. And so I just like, you know, couldn't do a lot of the projects that I wanted to and that's fine like you know I guess with chronic illness you just have to accept that like no amount of planning is gonna necessarily like stop you from being in pain if you're in pain you know like if you can't do something um and I guess I do take I take a few more precautions I think when knitting now because of that experience like I do try to just have a break even if I'm not in pain um whilst knitting you know after like 15 20 minutes um and I try to like remember to do some stretches and I try to like sit nicely and I try to yeah give my hands a break I sometimes take like rest days um even if I do really want to knit like I try to just have like a day at least if I'm like knitting you know every day or something um I try to have one where I'm just like not gonna knit at all Sometimes I use Shabbat for that, but sometimes I do knit on Shabbat because I like knitting. <laughs> uh, it was a mixed bag of a year. I think the aim I had was to make 11 things and I ended up, no, sorry, to make 12 things and I ended up making 11, uh, which is fine, you know. Um, I do kind of wish I could get through more of my yarn in the sense that like, I don't, it's not that I wanted to go away, but what I struggle is that because I kind of collected bits and bobs, I do just find it hard to like make full garments with it and then I feel like I have to take more yarn into my life in order to make actual garments but then the stuff I have doesn't really deplete that much with the exception of like I do feel really happy with the like amount of yarn this took up and like the, all the progress I made um with that and obviously only having this much left of a 500 gram cone I did make something else the year before now uh with this held double I think a little like crop top thing um which I also like um but yeah you know I had quite a lot of it left after that and it's great to have really made a proper dent in it <laughs> I do have a goal for 2024 uh which is to knit something green that's sort of my idea I'd also love to knit a skirt but you know I, I don't think I'm gonna set any resolutions except from that goal to knit something green which I do think I will need to get some yarn in for, but that's okay. Like, I think I need to learn the lesson of like, just buying yarn, even if it's just one ball of yarn, but like buying yarn with a purpose in mind. I hope that your 2023 was like, okay. It was a very hard year, I think, globally. And also I personally had a really difficult 2023. Um, I really hope that, I don't know, uh, I'm doing a test knit right now and I'm thinking about like trying to embroider, um, it's for a cardigan and I'm thinking about trying to embroider like Free Palestine or something on it, um, but I don't know, I, uh, yeah, it, what, it's just been hard, hasn't it? Um, I hope that knitting has helped you, you know, carve out space to nourish yourself so that you can return to the world as energized about making it a better place as possible um and I hope that you know it helps you to respect the uh the creative forces and crafts that are alive and present in our world um and if you can hear the wind I you know that's that's the creative forces in the world <laughs> um yeah, I think uh, that's everything that I have to kind of share. I mean, I think I was going to make a proper kind of like 2024 plans, uh, like knitting plans video, but because my phone died, I, I, don't, I don't really want to go into that. So I think we'll just leave it here um, for now. And yeah, tell me about what you've made in 2023. Tell me about what you're looking forward to in 2024. Uh, 
Do you have a favorite thing that I made? <laughs> Let me know. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully make, you know, slightly more updates uh, next year. But this is just like a really chill thing for me, but I just still want to share my knitting. So, you know, it, yeah. If you want to maybe put on the like notification bell, because obviously I'm not algorithm ready. <laughs> uh, that's maybe a good idea, but it doesn't really, it's fine. It's all fine. Um, cool. I, yeah, I hope you have a good day when you're seeing this. I hope you are knitting or making something that is bringing you joy and I will see you as 2024 goes, goes. Bye!